My name is Matt, and I eat trash. I became a dumpster diver a couple summers ago when a friend of mine showed me this great bakery dumpster out in Brooklyn. Every night around midnight, a guy would push a rack out of the truck bay that was piled high with all sorts of bread. You'd have slabs of ciabatta, roasted garlic baguettes, kalamata olive sourdough, and just dump them still hot into this dumpster. There was another dumpster next to it that was just filled with uncooked dough, and for hours afterwards it would rise up and lift the lid off of the dumpster like some blob from a B-horror movie. On any given night in New York, there's enough food lying out on the street to make paying for it seem utterly ridiculous. We set off from the Lower East Side on beat-up old bikes. Some people had messenger bags, some people had milk crates strapped to their handlebars to bring the booty home at the end of the night. There was so much that the only way you could possibly describe it would be... Shamefully abundant. More food than you could ever possibly eat. How often do you go dumpster diving? A couple nights a week. I can usually spend about an hour, hour and a half, and get enough food for a couple days. What percentage of your meals do you get out of the trash? I'd say about 95% to 100%. Uh -huh. Well, how much money do you spend? You don't spend any money on food. I think this year on food I spent a total of six dollars, um, three dollars a piece on two energy drinks for one night when I had to stay awake all night. That was my complete food budget for the year. You gotta understand this. Adam is doing this because he wants to, not because he has to. For these guys it's, it's a choice, not a necessity. It, it's, it's almost a game. A game to see how much stuff you can get for free. When the pizza place pulls down its shutters and leaves a bag of slices on the sidewalk. Where to get an unlimited supply of day-old bagels when the health food store tosses out all its past eight yogurt. You never use the term expired when you're dumpster diving. I have a photocopied map with all the good dumpsters, descriptions. Anyone coming into town from somewhere else can, can get hooked up right away and not have to worry about finding something to eat. And it works both ways. Whenever these guys travel to another city, there's a sort of dumpster underground that lets them know where the best spots are to find something to eat. For people who don't pay for their food, they also have pretty expensive tastes. See, the, the sushi, that's, that's a big, big plus. It's so awesome being able to have, give people chocolate, <laughs> wrapped up chocolate. We were all over Portland getting caviar, biscottis, cinnamon almonds. Their culinary preferences sort of reflect their ambivalence towards society. In fact, to them it's a logical reaction to the wastefulness of modern society. I see myself as something that's outside of capitalism. This really goes much deeper than digging through the trash for something to eat. Uh, it's about the choices that you make in life, politically, even what you want to eat. But for example, a lot of the dumpster divers that I met were vegans. But this isn't garden variety veganism. In fact, it's a sort of new denomination where if you get something from the trash, you enter a new moral universe. If it's from the trash, it's not like uh, you're paying for it and supporting it. People call it freeganism. So an example would be they're rifling through the Trader Joe's dumpster and they find a carton of eggs and they're stoked because deep down inside they love eggs but <laughs> they don't want to buy eggs. So that's free. Sure they have maps and they know where the best spots to go are but sometimes you don't find anything. It's hit or miss. So. When you win, you really feel like you hit the jackpot. Like at this fancy French pastry shop we went to in the East Village. Yo! What are it's we looking lemon. at here? It's lemon cream pie. There were slightly cream. dented tarts, uh, pies that were a little bit flat, eclairs with a, a few coffee grounds that needed to be brushed of off. We got raspberries, we got strawberries, we got blackberries. There's something incredible about scarfing down this $10 pastry that you got for free. It's delicious. Oh my God, it's radical. This is like the best dessert I've tasted in months. I come here once a week or so when I want to treat myself. And still, there was, there was something sad about the whole endeavor. There was just so much trash and we knew we were never gonna be able to rescue it all. So at the end of the night's rounds, we returned. Everyone came back down to the Lower East Side, and we went to the squat. Is this the place? It's a sort of a, a dumpstered building, an old building on the Bowery that they've taken over and moved into. This is kind of dark. 
Air flashlight. They've pirated electricity from the building next door. There's a clock, there's a stereo, a record player, tape deck. We have a toaster, we have a blender. So what are you making right now? Making a smoothie. Out of what? Bananas. It's really comfortable here. It's This is the main room. They've made a home for themselves, and it seems like the kind of existence that could go on forever. They've created a sort of community outside, beyond the frontiers of normal society that everyone else lives in, in which they take care of each other. And that seems to be enough. They've found a way to make it in the world, and it's by living off of what the rest of us have thrown away.